Hi everyone, my name is Xu Peisen. Welcome to my presentation. My research is about rendering the style of 20th century cartoon line art in 3D real time. Let me start by introducing the historical development of visual style in 3D computer graphics. Computer graphics has traditionally focusing on photorealism, which means to simulate a variety of complicated effects in the real world. Creative industry is looking into expanding the style to more stylization choices for visual novelty. One of the major concerns in this field is to create algorithms for software tools for simulating traditional mediums, such as watercolor simulation in MMPRX and line rendering in Blender Freestyle. More on this later. One artistic medium that has been constantly explored in computer graphics is the line art. NPR line rendering is mainly concerned with creating the contour line drawing automatically above the 3D objects. There are generally two branches for this kind of stylization rendering, offline or real-time. Offline prioritizes the quality over the speed, giving artists more control over the style. One example of offline rendering is Disney's Meander 2. Using this tool, artists can manually draw lines over the geometry. This tool can help animate the line based on the movement of the geometry. Another example is Sony's Spider-Man animated feature film, where they use machine learning technology to automate the animation of lines. Finally, Blender's Freestyle is also an offline rendering tool. Different from the previous tools, it generates lines automatically over the geometry based on the calculation of the mesh. It can also stylize the generated lines. On the other hand, real time is related to the speed of the rendering, and it is often measured by interactivity of the application. In general, the speed of 30 render frames per second is the threshold for smooth interaction. There are two common methods that are optimized for real-time. One is the screen space method using geometry buffer in the graphical pipeline. Another is the object space method, including the two-pass rendering technique and the geometry shader method. One major challenge for any of the above method in real-time line rendering is how to control the stylization of the line. A technique that circumvents this problem is the atom buffer. This technique uses additional off-screen buffer to store detected line. However, the downside of this technique is since it's running on CPU, the process can be slow and complex. Other efforts focus on controlling the variable thickness of the line. Some research has developed algorithm for controlling line thickness automatically based on the surface feature. The effort by the developer of Guilty Gear focused on giving artists control of, for the thickness of the lines by storing thickness information in the vertex color. The kinetic nature of cartoon line art in the 20th century has inspired many 2D animation. Two examples shown below are Gerard Scarf and Roland Saw. Scarf was involved in the production of the 2D animation for Pink Floyd's album, The Wall. His style is very aggressive, involving lots of twisted shapes and exaggerated large contours. So has also influenced lots of 2D animations, including Disney's 101 Dalmatian, and his style was recently exploited in the 3D animation Soul by Pixar. His style focused on the satirical expression and the squiggliness of the lines. Compared to them, Hirschfeld's style is more minimalistic and smoothly curved. Hirschfeld extensively drew the whole century of the American entertaining industry, and that is why many artists and animators were influenced by him. His style was adapted in Aladdin as the character Genie and in the animated short film Rhapsody in Blue. Furthermore, his style has also appeared as a solid shape in the CGI Genie. The question is how the line rendering technique can be used to enhance the visual appearance of the solid shape in the CG. 
In a comprehensive review of line drawing algorithm in 2018, Bernard and Herzman has mentioned that the research of 3D line drawing appears to reach the state of stagnation. Looking back to the existing efforts, what we can learn from the CG industry is that templates need to be implemented for each unique use case. And what we can learn from the game industry is that the technique are subject to industry's real-time standard, and the workflow to stylize the line is in need. What I discover from this is that we need to innovate the workflow with qualitative an analysis of the line style. Furthermore, there is rarely any research focus on the real-time 3D implementation of the influential 20th century cartoon line artists. Thus, by adapting Hirschfeld's artwork, this research will discover a no novel workflow and develop a set of tools to stylize 3D real-time line art and animation. This is a showcase of the result of our real-time workflow in Unity, which is on the right, comparing to the offline result rendered in Blender's freestyle, which is on the left. Our workflow focuses on the implementation of two features in 3D real time. The first one is the edge mark feature. Inspired by Freestyle's edge mark face mark function, it, a similar control was developed in our input and output workflow. Important edges are marked and recorded in an additional UV, and this UV is then used inside the real-time engine to recover the marked edges. Additionally, loose edges can be also exported and rendered in Unity. The second feature is the line weight map and line weight editing. This is inspired by the Guilty Gears approach. Variable line thickness is controlled by additional line weight texture. Additionally, the line weight can be directly edited in Unity in real time. For the animated mesh, the line weight can be edited for each frame of the animation, and the line weight is interpolated between frames. This is a visual breakdown of my workflow. As you can see in step 1, the edges are, marked, uh, are manually marked in Blender, and the marked edges are rendered in blue. The line weight map is also prepared in this step and later was imported into Unity together with the character mesh. After the mesh and the texture are imported, the user can use a custom tool for mesh pre-processing. This step will generate a custom data file for each mesh, which contains the vertex uh, counts, the triangle index count, and the triangle adjacency information. This information are essential for real-time line rendering using the geometry shader. Finally, in step 3, several real-time settings can be adjusted in the material of the mesh. This includes the texture, the color, and the line weight map, and also the line thickness and loose line thickness modifier. So this slide shows a typical user interface of our application. The panel on the left shows a list of objects currently rendered in the scene. Select one of them and use mouse pointer to select the edge for rendering. The selected edge are marked in red, and the area of the selection is indicated by a red circle. User can adjust the thickness slider for fine-tuning the line. The influence on the thickness is based on a follow. User can also adjust the radius of the area of influence. With the initial selected vertex as the center, the radius is based on the degree of connection to the nearby visible segments. Additional tools have been developed for assisting the adjustment of line thickness. Erase move the line segment com uh, completely, while the fill tool modify the line thickness to match the local maximum thickness. After the editing is done, the current line thickness can be recorded into the custom data by clicking the Save button, and or redone by stop the play mode in Unity. 
This is a showcase of a simple animation created using Blender and rendered using R2. The animation on the left is rendered only with the line way map. On the right, the line thickness is modified and stored in keyframes, resulting in the smooth transition of line thickness during the animation. The line weight is interpolated linearly in real time between keyframes. More animated examples are shown in the following pages. To further experiment with our workflow, we adapted another Hirschfeld's drawing to 3D. His drawing of Gershwin was chosen to exemplify the workflow. The mesh is created with around 20,000 vertices. The texture is hand-painted in Photoshop with specific attention paid to details, such as the thin repeated lines on the clothes and the hair, and the sequencing line on the facial feature, etc. The static mesh is then imported into Unity and rendered with line weight map approach, shown in figure 37. The mesh is then animated based on the animation clip from Rhapsody in Blue on the top right corner. The character is rigged in Blender with bendy bone function, which is a way to replace long chains of large amount of small rigged bones. This feature is helpful for animating the character's arm and fingers in Hirschfeld style, since they often curve and bend in a very exaggerated way. However, on export to FBX, the bendy bone information will be lost. Thus, we use a lambic format to directly record the mesh deformation information on, on export. In figure 40 is the real-time 3D line rendering animation result of the mesh. Notice that there is some flickering issue in the result. Thus, in the next slide, we tested more examples to discover when the flickering appears. We tested the workflow with another animated mesh created by Davide Benvenuti, called Apple of My Eye. This time, the character was modeled and animated in Maya, and the mesh is relatively more optimized with around 10,000 vertices in the animated mesh. It was also exported and imported into Unity in the Alembic format. The table shows a performance comparison of different character mesh. Notice that the static mesh works fine even with a high polycount, while the animated mesh only works with a relatively low polycount. Furthermore, at around 40 to 50 frames per second, flickering starts to appear. Thus, some temporal anti-aliasing method need to be implemented to overcome this issue. In the future, the algorithm can be improved with temporal anti-aliasing techniques employed to enhance the performance. Furthermore, more 20th century cartoon line artists can be studied and adapted to expand our workflow. More stylization choices can be implemented with reference to their style, such as adapting the squiggling line of saw or adapting the large and long strokes and line texture of scarf. That's all for my presentation. Thank you for listening.